Hello. Uh, today I wanted to sort of highlight some films that I think are uh, fairly underrated. Um, some of them I've actually talked about before uh, in terms of they have a video of their own. Others I've never said anything about. Um, and others I have just mentioned before. Um, some of these I might actually make uh, other videos about in terms of... Uh, Sort of giving more thoughts because maybe I, I, I had I didn't have a whole lot to say at the time when I made an initial video of some of them, and so it might be better that I actually uh, make a future video of some of these, and uh, hopefully I will actually talk about some of these that I've never talked about before in other videos, but. Um, and another thing I've noticed, uh, Christian Bale seems to be a good, uh, uh, seems to be somebody who, as I was picking these out, um, these are some I've actually been thinking about for a while, um, and, uh, I just noticed he's in a bunch of these films, uh, at least I think are, con are, are considered, or at least I would consider, at least, uh, underrated in that, they don't really get much attention. People don't really talk about them at most. They might be in passing to some degree. Um, maybe you'll agree with some. Uh, and maybe others you might not agree with. Maybe you'll think that they have enough praise and it's weird that I would even put them uh, uh, somewhere that would be considered un, uh, underrated to any extent. Um, but uh, at least for me, uh, these films are, are some that people don't really talk much about. Um, at least not anymore. Maybe at, a, at the time they were talked about. But as time goes on, they might get mentioned here and there, but they're not in the conversation regularly. Um, in the first movie, I have a three uh, movie pack, or three movies. Uh, here with Christian Bale, American Psycho, which is a cult classic. That is not the film I'm talking about. Um, there's Velvet Goldmine, which I guess could be considered underrated. I don't know. Um, I don't mind the film, uh, but it's not one I really enjoy watching over and over. It's a fine movie, fine performances. Uh, but the film I'm talking about is uh, Three Tent Yuma right here. Um, remake of um, uh, of an older film. Um, I can't recall exactly when that film came out. I want to say in the 50s at some point. Um, but anyway, that film was really good. And uh, and this was actually a very good remake. Uh, Christian Bale and C Russell Crowe are really fantastic in this movie. Uh, just the story uh, is very gripping, and it's just a, it's a very good movie. Um, Nowadays, people don't really seem to talk much about it, uh, unfortunately. Um, and, uh, man who made uh, made this, uh, James Mangold, he, uh, pro you probably will know him for some of his more recent films. Uh, Logan, which was fantastic, and Ford vs. Ferrari. Um, I enjoy those films quite a bit. Um, and he also made uh, Walk the Line, so... You know, this is a director who makes very good films. Um, it's one that, I, this is 310 to Yuma, that remake I think is one that's fairly underrated. Another is uh, Half Nelson. Uh, stars Ryan Gosling. Uh, and uh, Anthony Mackie. Uh, this is just a, a really fantastic film. Uh, Ryan Gosling plays a middle school, middle school history teacher who's a drug addict and uh, uh, you know, he's just a you know, he's uh, somebody who tries to uh, get his students very interested in history as well as a uh, there's one in there's one character there's one in this class he uh, uh, 
he's fond of, like she does very well, and he uh, like sees a lot of potential in her, and uh, it's just a very uh, it's a very good film. Uh, I'd like to talk about this more in depth one day, but uh, this is one that I uh, enjoy quite a bit. It doesn't really seem to be talked much about anymore. Gosling got nominated for an Academy Award. Uh, very deserving of that nomination. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, Forrest Whitaker won that year for uh, The Last King of Scotland. And, uh, you know, I, I, I can't really be, you know, too... Uh, uh, upset or disappointed with that de uh, decision, you know, uh, Whitaker was uh, you know, fantastic, uh, as was Gosling, so that would have been a tough year, I think, if I if I was able to uh, throw a vote in, it would be between probably uh, those two. Um, another film with a nominee of that year, which is uh, my favorite year, is starring Peter O'Toole. Uh, very uh, very funny film. Uh, he plays uh, Peter O'Toole plays uh, an Errol Flynn type character, uh, based off of an experience essentially that uh, Mel Brooks had when he worked on the Sid Caesar show regarding like a uh, Errol Flynn, the uh, being on it. And uh, this is just a film that I uh, I've I've enjoyed for so many years. It's a film that unfortunately. Uh, as of now, it doesn't have a Blu-ray release. At least not here in America, that I, last I checked. <clears throat> um, if it does have one, it's probably like in the UK. Or Region 2 locked. Um, I don't have a Region 3 Blu-ray player to uh, play it if I ever did get, uh, get that uh, film on Blu-ray. But, you know, this is a film that is quite... Uh, Quite funny. It's a very good film. Uh, O'Toole again got nominated for an Academy Award, but just like every time he got nominated, he always lost, uh, and that's unfortunate. Um, but uh, that year was uh, Ben Kingsley and Gandhi, so that was a very tough year in the acting department for lead actor. Also, uh, Paul Newman was nominated for the verdict, so. You know, three-way ties, uh, I don't think, really would happen. I've talked about, you know, sometimes there should be ties. But if there was ever a three-way tie, which would probably be very rare, I think 1982 would have been a good, could have been seen as a year that it would have been understandable if such a tie ever happened between uh, Kingsley, Newman, and O'Toole. Um but, you know, this is a fantastic film. If you've never seen it, I, I recommend it. Um, I could definitely go into more depth and talk about this uh, at a later time. Um, it's really that good. It's fantastic. Another is, uh, well, my favorite, uh, David Fincher film, Zodiac. Um, you know, about the Zodiac uh, killer case. And, uh, yeah, this is a film that, you know, near the end it kind of gets to be a bit biased towards who uh, the killer is. But in the instances where you can see glimpses of the killer, uh, it's a different person playing the Zodiac because uh, the people who saw him and lived uh, saw him differently. Uh, you, he looked somewhat similar, but never the same. Um, and on that aspect, uh, I really I like that. And it's really interesting to see just uh, the dynamic of the investigation. Yes, liberties were taken, obviously. But uh, I just enjoy this film. This is my, actually my favorite film that came out in 2007. Should have been nominated for many Academy Awards. Robert Downey Jr. deserved an Academy Award nomination, if not the actual Oscar. Uh, that's how great of a job he did, uh, in my opinion. Definitely award worthy, but it seemed to have uh, been uh, just uh, one of those gems that just got overlooked, and 
afterwards, as the year, years went on, people really looked at this film and said, this is actually a really good film and uh, deserves more more praise than it has already gotten. It got a lot of critical uh, praise, but uh, definitely uh, uh, at the time probably should have gotten more in, in terms of awards. But uh, yeah, this is a fantastic film. Definitely hope to talk about this more in the future. Um, another film from 2007, uh, Michael Clayton. Uh, I think it's George Clooney's best performance. Um, you know, he's a fixer at a law firm, and yeah, the performances in this are fantastic. You know, Clooney, in my opinion, gave his the best of his entire career. I'm at this point. Um, Tom Wilkinson, Tilda Sweet, Sweeten, and uh, Cindy Pollock are all incredible. Uh, just a fantastic film overall. Um, I don't know uh, what more to say other than it's just really good. Uh, without getting into too many uh, specifics about the film. Um, and another 2007 film, uh, sort of like the last one of that year, I believe, at least uh, for DVD, um, The Assassination of Jesse James by the Coward Robert Ford. Very good film. Uh, performances are incredible. Casey Affleck got an Academy Award nomination. Definitely worth, uh, he definitely deserved it. Uh, story about uh, you know Robert Ford and his connection with Jesse James and eventually well as the title tells you uh, his uh, assassination uh, his assassinating of Jesse James and how afterward how that affected him in his life um, you know this is a real gem that all, 2007 had a lot of incredible films and unfortunately, some got buried because of, you know, other incredible movies like uh, No Country for Old Men and There Will Be Blood or just two huge films of that year. Uh, this is an underrated film. Uh, some say the uh, title did not help at all. You know, it's a very long title. And because of that, some people just didn't really... Uh, go and watch it you know maybe they heard of it but because of the title wasn't uh, I guess a very memorable one to everyone so they didn't see it uh, but this is a film that is definitely uh, worth the watch if you haven't seen it uh, any like westerns or western type films uh, there's definitely western elements to it and uh I think it's really worth uh, worth a watch. Um, and uh, this one is the drop. Tom Hardy is fantastic. Uh, I believe I've talked about this before. Uh, yeah, I just I find this is a, a quite an underrated film. Uh, performances and the story is very captivating uh final performance of james gandolfini numi pace is uh i always get her name wrong apologies for that uh but she's fantastic james o gandolfini was really good um yeah i don't know what else to really say uh maybe i'll uh, talk about this again at some point this is a very good film uh Definitely, uh, <clears throat> definitely worth a watch, uh, especially if you like uh, crime movies. Uh, it's it's one that's really worth uh, worth a watch. It's uh, it's fantastic. And the last uh, DVD I have is uh, now some might think this is weird that I would include this, but. Please hear me out. Uh, 
the last DVD I have is uh, The Machinist. And uh, I see this as underrated because when people talk about this film, what they talk about is Christian Bale's weight loss. Not too many people talk about the plot of the film or what the movie is about. You know, aside from him having insomnia for a long time that resulted in being skinny. But again, that results back to Bale's weight loss. And uh, it's definitely a, an incredible performance. And the story is also really uh, incredible. Uh, this is a film that uh, I think deserves more attention uh, for the quality of the film itself. Uh, not just the, the weight loss that Bale gave. Um, I mean, Bale gives an incredible performance. He pretty much always does. Um, but the film deserves more um, recognition than, than just, you know, uh, he bought, he was 121 pounds and was like 63 pounds lighter than he normally is. Uh, the film itself is a legitimately good film. Definitely deserves recognition beyond just that. Uh, the weight loss aspect. <clears throat> uh, so if you have never seen this film, uh, I say uh, re just watch it. And if you have watched it, but it's been a while, uh, rewatch it. It's a definitely a good film. Uh, I think it's worth at least a viewing uh, because uh, I knew this movie as the movie that sort of began the weight loss and gains that tr uh, Christian Bale would be really known for. I mean, I guess there's American Psycho, but this really began people to take note when he went from this to Batman and doing that in countless other films since. Uh, this really had people look at him in a different light. Uh, so that's the last one that I have for uh, <clears throat> DVD that I want to discuss. The first one on Blu-ray that I have is uh, The Insider. Um, this is a Michael Mann film, and uh, it's a really fantastic movie. Uh, about uh, Russell Crowe plays a whistleblower about uh, you know big tobacco and uh, just uh, him trying to get the story out there uh, you know inspired by a true story uh, very good film Crowe got nominated for an Academy Award definitely deserving of a nomination possibly should have won but you know he you know this is an incredible film from Michael Mann. Uh, Al Pacino is also incredible. Uh, yeah, this is a movie that uh, not too many people talk about anymore. Um, uh, you know, Michael Mann's probably his biggest movie is Heat, for obvious reason. Um, but this is an excellent film. Uh, definitely worth a watch um yeah i just love this film it's really fantastic uh um another is a man another michael mann film this one again maybe some might think it's not really that underrated which which i guess is true to an extent but um collateral um this is a film that uh it's a crime film from uh, Michael Mann, but, you know, you know, again, I, in terms of crime films with uh, Mann, uh, he, again, seems to take the cake anymore um, regarding that. Um, but this is a fantastic movie. I think this is Tom Cruise's best performance of his career, uh, at least for me. I'm not a huge Tom Cruise fan. I mean, he does do good work, but uh, some films I can sort of take it or leave it. But this is a film that I love watching, that I love to watch and rewatch over and over. 
Jamie Foxx is incredible. Jada Pinkett Smith is in it. She does a, f a very fine job in it or two. Fox got nominated for an Academy Award, but uh, Tom Cruise didn't, which I think is a real shame. I think he deserved a nomination at the very least um, for Best Actor. Um, yeah, he... I'll probably talk about this one day. This is fil a film I'll want to talk more about, not just uh, mention it here and there. Uh, definitely worth a watch. Um, uh, this is like the last uh, Michael Mann film. Uh, maybe the last Christian Bale film, too. Um, but uh, Public Enemies. I really love this film. You know, Johnny Depp is Don John Dillinger. Uh, Christian Bale is Melvin Purvis, and he's uh, you know hunting down John Dillinger in the FBI's Most Wanted. I know uh, there are again liberties taken with this film so that's inspired by like a true story, but this is a very f incredible movie. You know, it's just a, a a joy to watch in terms of just having a like a going on a ride and seeing the events of the film unfold. Uh, this doesn't get as much attention anymore like it did at one point, and uh, it's unfortunate. Um, definitely deserves more praise. It has it got praise when it came out, but. Time goes on. It's not talked about much anymore. I think that's a real shame. Definitely deserves to be talked about more than it does. Um, and, uh, oh, I lied. I just saw another film from Christian Bale. So, no, I kind of, I guess I lied. Apologies. Uh, uh, but, uh, yeah, uh, Hell, Hell or High Water is an incredible movie. Uh, has a Western feel to the film. Uh, Chris Pine and uh, Ben Foster are, you know, uh, brothers. They, uh, Rob Banks and Jeff Bridges is the sheriff. Uh, this came out in 2016, so it will be five years old this year. Uh, one of the newer films that I'm talking about. Um, it got a lot of praise, and but uh, unfortunately it isn't talked about m much these days, some years later. Definitely deserved to be talked about more. Um, really good crime film. It's really riveting from beginning to end, in my opinion. I love watching this. It's a, just a fantastic film. Really well made and well acted. And, uh, there's another Bale film. And there's another one, too. Yeah, I, I sort of picked these at random. Some of these I've actually thought of, about. Well, they aren't really random, but I just look through some of my uh, movies and picked a bunch out. But I thought I'd put all the Bale ones closer to the top. Uh, like after the Michael Mann films, you'd see more and more instead of <laughs> a film in between. But... Uh, this is one uh, came out 2013, uh, the same year as American Hustle, but this doesn't get into as much uh, uh, recognition as American Hustle, and that is uh, Out of the Furnace. It stars Christian Bale, Woody Harrelson, Casey Affleck, Forrest Whitaker, Willem Dafoe, Zoe Saldana, and Sam Shepard. Very good film. Uh, I saw this on the big screen, and, uh, yeah, it's, it was a fantastic movie. Uh, yeah, this is, a uh, from Scott Cooper. Uh, you know, they say, uh, you know, Christian Bale plays a man who leads a dead-end life, works in a mutilist. Steel uh, mill job all day, cares for his terminally 
ill father at night and his brother is played by Casey Affleck returns from Iraq and is lured to one of the Northeast's most ruthless crime gangs and it, it mysteriously disappears. Just a fantastic film. A uh, really good movie. Uh, I recommend if you have uh, watching this if you have never seen it before. It's really good and uh, yeah, it's a it's definitely worth a watch at least once. Um, all of these movies are. And uh, another film with Bale from the same director too. I've actually talked about this film, uh, but it's uh, Hostiles, and uh, you know Christian Bale plays a soldier who uh, has to uh, escort a dying Cheyenne war chief, as it says, back to his tribal lands, and he uh, does not like him or his people because. They uh, have had conflicts before, and you know they, they've killed each other's men, and so they don't like each other. Um, and there's a lot of hate in there, and it's a film where it's like you know, you know they kind of have to let go of hate, but that's really hard to do. And watching this film, you can see how that transformation happens if it does. Like, will they be able to? forgive each other and move on or are they going to hang on to hate and it's just this is just a fantastic movie Bale deserved an Academy Award nomination uh, when this came out it's a shame uh, he didn't but you know uh, hopefully as years go on this will be a film that uh, people will rediscover and rewatch over and over it's definitely a film that's worth a view, uh, a few viewings at least. This is another western that bails in, and uh, I just love it. It's a fantastic movie. Um, here is a film starring my favorite actor, Gary Oldman, Immortal Beloved, about the life of. Uh, Ludwig uh, Beethoven, Van Beethoven, and uh, sort of circles uh, a letter he wrote that he says to my, like, immortal beloved, and nobody knows who he's talking about. Um, and you can see uh, uh, many events in his life go, and Oldman gives an incredible performance. He be, He becomes... Beethoven, and he deserved an Academy Award nomination. I know I keep saying that for some of these movie, movies and people, but he truly did. He uh, he really helped make this film even more memorable than it already is because you know the story is very fascinating and the performances are incredible. But you know you have also Isabella Rossellini and Valeria Gellerano. I believe I've talked about this to some degree, maybe a little bit. Mentioned it a few times, but this is a film that truly deserves recognition and is more recognition than it has. Came out in 1994, uh, same year as Forrest Gump, Pulp Fiction, The Lion King, uh, The Shawshank Redemption, and so many other films. Uh, films, you know, 1994 is an incredible year for movies. Uh, yeah, yeah, this is a <clears throat> this is truly an incredible uh, film to watch. If you're a music fan, I think you'll appreciate the music that they have here. Obviously, it's Beethoven, but yeah, uh, Oldman I think does a, an incredible job as Beethoven. He's just fantastic. Um, <clears throat> this is a film that uh, has won an, did win an Academy Award, which I'm actually glad about, which is uh, Capote, 
Um, I've mentioned this before, and uh, yeah, chronicling uh, Truman Capote's uh, writing of In Cold Blood and uh, his interactions with the uh, killers and what that does to him. It's really, you know, it's a very fascinating film. And Philip Seymour Hoffman was deserving of the Academy Award he won for this film. I think this film should have won more Oscars, honestly. And actually, it's I, I'm probably of the unpopular opinion that I think this was actually the best picture of the year. This deserved it more, but that's me. Um, but that's also just how much I love this movie. Uh, you know, Philip Seymour Hoffman, he, be, he became Truman Capote. You know, uh, I've, I've praised uh, Christian Bale and Gary Oldman quite a bit, but Hoffman truly is somebody who deserves uh, as much praise as he has gotten and more, especially for this film. He, he is incredible. This film doesn't be talked about much anymore. You know, it's by Bennett Miller, who has only made three feature-length films. He's made a documentary before. But this is a movie that truly deserves recognition uh, more than it already has. And the last film I have is also from Bennett Miller. And that is a film I have definitely talked about quite a bit on this channel. And that is Foxcatcher. I love this movie. I have often said that Steve Carell, in my opinion, deserved Best Actor. I still think that, but, you know, Eddie Redmayne did a fantastic job in <clears throat> The Theory of Everything, so, you know, that's no real, real uh, I'm not really dis too disappointed in that decision. Only that my preferred pick did not win, but I think that's what everybody, when their preferred pick does not win, uh... You're always sort of disappointed, but you hope that at least if they do lose, it's to somebody who was just as deserving of, as they were. And uh, Carell really uh, uh, transformed himself. This is like his first true dramatic film, his dramatic performance. Um, Channing Tatum is incredible, too, as is Mark Ruffalo. Bennett Miller directed... Uh, an incredible movie. I know I would definitely love uh, f to see a four-hour director's cut. And I know that's probably seems a bit, a bit a bit much to some, but you know I I was just so in invested in this movie when I saw it in the theater. I saw that this multiple times on the big screen. Um, it's a slow film. It's like a slow burn, but I think this is worth truly worth uh, the. Uh, time watching it it's just one of those movies that when i begin watching it i just watch it all the way through and i'm just in, i'm just in the into the film i'm really interested in in what's going on uh, i love this film uh, to me words can't do this film justice this is just this is a, a definitely an underrated movie some of these you might say not so much, but this is truly an underrated film. This is a film that I hope as years go on, people will rediscover it and just watch it, and hopefully they'll be appreciated and enjoy it uh, as much as I do. Definitely a, a huge underrated film in my opinion. Um, and that's it. Um... <clears throat> You know, just some brief comments of some some uh, fantastic movies. I, words, words just uh, words can't just they can't do co uh, complete justice, uh, in my opinion, to many of these films. Uh, you just have to watch them, and there are many other films that are underrated. Um, so what do you think about some underrated films? Do you think any of these are underrated and deserve to be on 
such a list, or are there other films you would put on a, on a, your own underrated list? Uh, if you'd like to comment on on any of them, on any of these I've mentioned or others I didn't mention, uh, you're more than welcome to comment. Um, I, uh, yeah, I just wanted my uh, first video of 2021 to be something a bit different. Um, not focus on just solely one film. Uh, but yeah, uh, just sort of shining a light on some films that I've mentioned in the past or I have talked about. Maybe talk about them again at some point, and others I hope to talk about at some point in the future. Um, I guess in a way, sort of tease, hopefully be able to talk about any of these films later on. Yeah, I love these films. There's so many others. I, I mean, I could have kept going, but I mean, I didn't want this video to be too long, and it's almost 40 minutes now, so I'll just end it here. I hope you're all having a great day. Hope you're all having a hope you'll have a great weekend and have a great week. Hope you've you've had a good new year so far. And I'll see you all next time.